Let's explore the incredible discoveries made by India's Chandrayaan-3 mission, revealing that our moon once harbored a vast ocean of molten rock. This mission has given us groundbreaking data, suggesting that an ocean of molten rock covered the moon at one point in its history. This discovery not only sheds light on the moon's origins, but also gives us deeper insight into the early dynamics of our planet, Earth. The birth of the moon. To understand the moon's molten past, we need to revisit its dramatic birth. The moon is thought to have formed after a colossal impact between Earth and a Mars-sized protoplanet known as Theia. This collision, occurring around 4.5 billion years ago, ejected massive amounts of debris into orbit around Earth. This debris quickly coalesced, forming what we now recognize as our moon. In those early years, Earth and the Moon were much closer to each other, and both were spinning faster. During this chaotic period, debris from the initial impact continued to rain down on both bodies, further shaping their surfaces. Molten Beginnings Data from Chandrayaan-3 provides compelling evidence to support the hypothesis that an ocean of molten rock once covered the Moon. When the Moon first formed, it was incredibly hot. The intense heat generated from the collision with Thea, combined with the energy from subsequent impacts, would have been enough to melt much of the rock that made up the early moon. Insights from Chandrayaan-3's landing. Fast forward to August 23, 2023. India's Chandrayaan-3 mission made a historic landing further south on the moon than any previous mission. The lander, named Vikram, deployed a rover called Pragyan to explore this uncharted territory. The rover's measurements revealed a uniform chemical composition in the lunar soil, or regolith, around the landing site. Interestingly, this regolith is primarily made up of a white rock type called Ferone anorthosite. This type of rock is significant because it aligns with the idea that a single global magma ocean once covered the moon. The uniformity in chemical composition suggests that despite the passage of billions of years and numerous impacts, remnants of this early crust remain widespread across the Moon. Comparative analysis with previous missions, Chandrayaan-3's findings are not isolated. They align with data from past missions, such as the US, Apollo 16 mission, and the Soviet Luna 20 mission both of which also explored the Moon's highlands. The chemical similarities between samples collected from these geographically distant locations bolster the idea of a once uniform magma ocean. Orbital measurements and lunar meteorites. Another critical aspect of Chandrayaan-3's mission is how its ground measurements corroborate orbital data collected by previous missions, such as Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2. These earlier missions provided comprehensive orbital datasets, mapping the Moon's surface from above. The consistency between Pragyan's ground-based measurements and the orbital data strengthens the credibility of these remote observations. This uniformity in chemical composition, observed over several kilometers, suggests that lunar meteorites, rock fragments ejected from the Moon's surface by impacts, might offer diverse samples from areas not visited by spacecraft. Understanding the near-side and far-side differences, Chandrayaan-3's findings also give us fresh perspectives on the differences between the Moon's near-side and far-side. The concept of a lunar magma ocean first emerged with the Apollo 11 mission, where scientists found white rock fragments rich in anorthite, the primary component of ferrone anorthosite. However, there's a curious contrast between the near side and the far side of the Moon. The near side, which faces Earth, is marked by dark basaltic plains, indicating extensive volcanic activity. In contrast, the far side is dominated by highlands and has a thicker crust. Understanding these differences requires more than just data. It demands complex models that explain the Moon's geological history. New models and complexities. Building on these findings, researchers have developed models that explain how the lunar crust formed and was later altered by volcanic eruptions and impact cratering. 
These models suggest that the crust consists of multiple layers, with ferrone anorthosite at the top and more magnesium-rich rocks beneath. Interestingly, the chemical composition measured by Chandrayaan-3 indicates a higher concentration of magnesium than previously thought. This observation hints at a more complex history of the Moon's crust, suggesting that it has been significantly altered by impacts that mix materials from different layers. The Impact of the South Pole Aitken Basin One significant feature that has shaped our understanding of the Moon's history is the South Pole Aitken Basin, a colossal impact site. It's believed that this massive crater, one of the largest in the solar system, was created by a major impact event early in the Moon's history. This basin likely played a crucial role in redistributing lunar material, mixing the upper and lower layers of the crust. The rocks excavated by this impact could explain the mixed chemical signatures detected by Chandrayaan-3. Subsequent impacts would have further churned the surface, spreading this material across large areas. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the Moon's molten past. If you enjoyed this exploration and want to learn more about the captivating mysteries of space, don't forget to like, subscribe to Mars 666, and hit the notification bell for more updates. Until next time, keep looking up and keep wondering.